Well, we want to welcome everybody as we're here to talk about Denton County Open, the Operational Plan for Economic Normalization, otherwise known to a lot of people, a great program that Denton County has put together to help Denton County businesses through a grant program. And before we get going, we want to acknowledge our sponsors for today's webinar. Our Economic Development Corporation is our presenting sponsor today as they are a key partner working with the Chamber and with Benton County. Um, and also Interactive Football, it's our virtual sponsor there and we want to thank them. Um, as we get into all of this, um, we want to, uh, over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, is talk a little bit about the open grant program through Denton County, the terms of it, how it works, how it got funded, and go from there. But first, Mr. Chris Lee, uh, Governmental Affairs Manager for the Frisco Chamber. I want to turn it over to you and if you can just give us a quick update from your perspective on what's happening in other areas of the legislative world. Yeah, absolutely. We've got quite a few things going on in the legislative world. DC's buzzing just a little bit these days. They've got their fifth round or phase four, complicated language there, but phase four is what's being talked about in DC right now. Uh, if you were to look at DC as a group project gone awry, I think that's kind of where we are with phase four funding. There was a, a group that put together a wish list that we'll, we'll see if any of that actually comes to light down the road. That's uh, on its way to the house, out of the house on Friday. We'll see how that actually turns out. But fingers crossed, Chambers of Commerce will be included. That was one thing we've been following very closely is that 501 C6s and 501 organizations as a whole are included in the PPP funding portions of all of this. There's con conversation about another individual stimulus check coming out as well, another $1,200 check per person kind of thing. We'll see how that all turns out. Um, and then other than that, we're on the state front. We're looking at phase two potentially opening on the 18th. I have not seen anything officially coming from the governor's office as of yet, as far as the press conference is concerned for what phase two might look like. So I'm still kind of waiting around to see what might be happening if we're opening up businesses to 50% or not, or we're staying at 25% for a little while longer. I'm sure Judge Eads might be able to shed a little bit more light on that if he's got some more insight than I do, but we'll, we'll see where that that's going down the road. So that's kind of what I've been tracking recently and what, what we're waiting on and we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Um, real quick, before I toss it back over to Tony and everybody, um, I do have a quick poll I wanna throw out to our audience. We just wanna see who on the call, who has businesses that are in Denton County. So um, if you are able to, please go ahead and log into that poll, identify whether you're in a Denton County business or a Collin County business or a Dallas County business, if you're all the way down there. Uh, we just kind of want to get an idea of who, who we're talking to today, so we appreciate that. I'm going to leave this open for just a few more seconds. And then from there, Tony, as this is coming in, if you want to go ahead and do a quick introduction of all of our panelists. Will do. Thank you very much, Chris. And as a reminder, again, if you have questions for our panelists, we do have the Q&A open, and Chris will be monitoring that. So. I think the judge was here, but now he's not, so we're going to let him get settled in first. So first, let me introduce our Director of Economic Development for Denton County, Mr. Michael Talley. Michael, would you like to introduce yourself very quickly to our audience? Sure, real quick. Uh, yeah, I've been on uh, a little over a year with, with Denton County. Excited to be here, excited to talk about this program we're rolling out, and I know the Commissioner's Court and Judge Eads is really excited to get this going. Very good. Thank you very much. And Judge Eads, welcome to our webinar here. I'm glad you got the memo on the uniform as we're all wearing our Denton County Open t-shirt. So I uh, just want to welcome you. Exactly. Very nice. Um, and would you like just to say hello to our attendees here very quickly if you can. I know you're on mute still. <coughs> there we go. Are you going to hear me? Yes, sir. We got you now. Okay. Is this is this my time? When is it? You want me just to do an introduction, or is this my time to talk about the program? Just a quick introduction. Okay, Andy Eats, Denton County Judge. I've been on the Commissioner's Court 13 and a half years, and a year and a half as judge. And excited to be here. Thank you, Tony, for the invitation. Thank you very much for making the time to be able to come on. We know you are extremely busy. And also joining us as panelists, representing CoServe, and we'll hear how they're involved in all this, Ms. Tracy Elrod, Manager of Community Support, Community Engagement. Welcome, Ms. Tracy. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We're, we're glad to be here. Very good. 
So I guess, Michael, we'll throw it to you first, um, kind of talking a little bit about how you and the judge and how did this grant program come together? What was the reason for doing it? And, and kind of how did you go about looking at it? I know you've looked at a lot of other programs out there. Just give us a little bit of background on how this all came together. And judge, feel free to jump in as well. Sure. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, uh, Tony. The, working with Commissioner's Court and Judge Eads, we've kind of put a team together uh, with, with Shannon Josky, his, his uh, chief administrator, and our public information officer, Don Cobb, looked at some different ways we could get involved, how, how we could help businesses. We really started looking at what other communities and what other counties were doing. Um, you know, as we say, we're not reinventing the wheel. We want to we learn from others and see what's working, see what's not. So we reached out to a lot of our counterparts at Bayer County, Harris County, Travis County, see what they were doing, see, see what they would change if they could change anything in the program. And then really just uh, presented it to the court and said, hey, how can we get this rolled out? Um, and what kind of funds do we have available? Uh, this discussion started well before CARES Act money was, was brought in or we received our CARES Act money. So we were planning on getting something in place. Um, with the CARES Act fund, uh, we're hoping to put even more in place, but I'll let the judge expand a little bit more on, on what his viewpoint of that is and, and what the plan is there. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, we we realized that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We realized that we needed to take some kind of action here to prop up our local businesses, and so as Michael said, we work with Michael and Shannon and Don and myself and the court, and we really looked around for best practice models about what what we could do, and we 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 determined that we would do this in house. We would make sure that it's an arm's length transaction from the commissioner's court. So our county auditor is going to be the one administering the program. Commissioner's Court set the overall guidelines from a policy perspective. And I'll go into that about our value system and how our value system is reflected in our scoring criteria. But we decided that we'd be able to do this in-house and we had the, the skill set and the talent to do that. So the county auditor is the one who is administering this. And he doesn't work for Commissioner's Court. He works for all the district judges over there. They hire and appoint him. But what one of the key points and, and i'm glad tracy's on the phone my dear friend tracy elrod was we were looking at to figure out how could we administratively um how could we administer this program in a way that's administratively easy and so i thought who does who does a lot of grants around here and that would be coserve and so I called coserve and said hey what program do y'all use because we're thinking about doing a grant program we'd like to do it in-house and, and and do it and and um, CoSERP said, we would, we would, uh, we have the, the best software program around and we would like to bless you, the county, and we would like to sponsor uh, y'all's software application, uh, the, the subscription to that. And so, so y'all could be able to administer the program. And so a big shout out to CoSERP for their vote of confidence and, and their partnership with us. Uh, while they are paying for the subscription, they are not involved in the grant review or administration of it. They're just a sponsor. And so that, that information is held confidential and they don't really have a role in that as well at, in any part. But they are they are a big supporter of the counties. They've always been in our nonprofits. So they realized this was a way to help. But I'd like to quickly kind of go over our scoring uh, criteria and what our value system was. <clears throat> you know, when we're putting this together, the commissioner's court thought that we would that our desire would be that we help small businesses across the county businesses that are located here obviously in Denton county and that it would it would help the smaller business how do we define small we define it with 50 employees or less and uh so and you had and we're given a preference to people who were who were closed or partially closed and more points to people who were closed the longest. So if you were a, a hairstylist and closed for seven weeks, you would score higher on that criteria versus a, biz, a restaurant who was partially closed. Were they neg was a restaurant negatively impacted? Absolutely, were they, but were they closed down outright? Uh, the answer to that is no, because they were, they were allowed to do takeout and modify their business. Were they, were they negatively impacted because they, their bar was not open. They couldn't get into the, have the, the bar service and the liquor sales. And that was, that's a big, that's a big uh, financial income segment for the restaurants. 
uh, serve alcohol, but they were still allowed to work and function in some way. And I'm so proud of the businesses who, the restaurants who stayed open and just modified their, their business practices. And it's really heartwarming to see a lot of people turn out and support those people, especially if some of the fine dining establishments started making sandwiches for lunch runs and everything. So it was kind of great. So, so small business, so 50 or less people who were closed the most and the most negatively impacted, and also those who can financially docu document their loss. So, so if they had greater losses, they get more, more points if they were, and we demonstrate that through their financials from March and, and uh, April of 19 compared to March and April of 2020. And so that's where we're asking for those financial documents. So the more, the more percentage that you lost from last year over this year, uh, helps you on that scoring. So, um, I would like to say that, um, we want people to apply, even if you have received PPP or other uh, state or federal programs, you are not precluded from applying. We want you to apply. We want the, the county to be able to help you too. There will be a preference given to people who have received nothing though. So if you've received nothing, if your application was snagged up, you've turned it in or you were declined for whatever reason, when you apply to the county, you will get more points because you haven't received other aid, but that does not eliminate you in any way. You're very likely to, to score high on other criteria as well. And so uh, I think that's important to note. So uh, people that close the longest have a big financial devastation and uh, who haven't received any other income, you're going to be scoring higher. That was kind of the value system that the commissioner's court uh, took into consideration. When we, start, when we started this, it was with 2.2 million dollars and we got that 2.2 million dollars all while it's public funds because it's in our treasury it was not it was not tax dollars it was not money just like we have some some of our income is uh grant money and some is fines and fees and some is property tax income we don't get sales tax in the county but the 2.2 million came to us through uh, CoServe originally because of our capital credits that we receive on an annual basis, basis if they do distributions. And so we have not spent those over the last 20 years or so. And so we've been keeping those for a rainy day and we believe that it's raining now. And so uh, that was our two, that's where we got the 2.2 to start with. That was before we ever, that's in our general fund and the county said, we, it is important to us to start a grant program, we are going to do this. Now that we've received uh, the federal CARES Act money, uh, I would anticipate us putting a zero at the end of this. And so I think that this would be more like $20 million versus uh, $2 million. And so that's why we're saying that we're encouraging everyone to apply as much as they can. Another thing that I wanna mention is that, and Tony, thank y'all for hosting this. We, he's been on all our calls every week as we I have weekly calls with our chambers and other countywide leaders. And thank you for the, for, for being involved in representing Frisco so well. The commissioner's court uh, realizes we do have a big megaphone. We, we can reach a lot of people, but we wanted to uh, partner and, and compensate our 19 chambers of commerce across the county and have them help us to get the word out, not only to their members, but also to all the businesses in their geographical service area. So uh, we appreciate the Frisco Chamber being involved with that. And so we're, we're, and they are promoting this and helping to field some questions. I would say that our, with this opened yesterday, I think we had over 500 applications or so yesterday. Um, it depends on how you calculated the ones that were completed versus the ones that are in process. We got a lot in process. So you can get on the computer, you can at dittoncounty.gov, make your application. You don't have to do it all in one setting. You can do it in a, you can go in, set up your account, and start uploading it, answer the questions. I had someone call me yesterday who's not really a computer person at all. She called me last night and said, okay, I'm not a good at computers. So and I was able to make my way through it. I said, well, how was it? You know, I, I, I reviewed it as we went through it as a demonstration. I said, but how was it? She goes, Andy, I, I had somebody, there to help me in case I got in a jam, but it was, it was great. It was pretty easy. And I said, okay, so um, you can get it. It's not first come first serve. Uh, so you can do it all the way up to the end uh, next Wednesday at noon. Um, and I would encourage, it was real important to the commissioner's court 
that we not do a first come first serve, that we not do a lottery, we do some kind of ranking system uh, that that met the criteria we, we, we just discussed. That was kind of our value system that was important to us. Um, but it's important if you have questions about the application, we do have a hotline number that's that's bilingual and it's open from eight to five Monday through Friday. Call if you don't, if they don't know the answer, uh, they will jot down a message, they will get clarification from our auditor and then they will circle back with you. So um, uh, don't let the fear factor on the paperwork uh, eliminate you from applying. We want you to apply, so be sure to apply. Yeah, we have the we have the website and the phone number up on the chat room right now and letting everybody so you've covered a lot of stuff. So I want to kind of come back in and dig into a little bit of that. First question I have for you, Judge, is the county's got 2.2 million out of the capital credits. I think the last check of that that I got was five dollars and thirty-six cents. So there's a big difference there. So Tracy, um, I want to throw it up to you and talk a little bit about the uh, charitable foundation that CoServe has, as the judge mentioned. You guys do a lot of stuff. You've been great partners with us, the school district, many different areas. But talk a little bit about why it's important for CoServe to be a part of this project and help out Denton County. You know, um, our CoServe Charitable Foundation was uh, founded and started back in 2004. And since then, we have given away $12.4 million of um, our capital, of, of our CoServe Charitable Foundation funding. Um, CoServe, if you're unfamiliar with, with what, who we are, we are an electric and gas cooperative. And um, communities mean a lot to us. We are involved in the community. I am represent uh, part of our community engagement team. And when, when Judge Eads called us and, and had, a, had a need for our county in this time, we jumped at it. And I would be remiss if I did not um, give a, a huge kudos and shout out to our CEO, Donnie Clary. When he found out, he said, do whatever we can to help this county. Um, we have a couple of our team members in our community engagement department. Vicki Sargent and Jessica Kraft, who have been working tirelessly around the clock to get this up and running. Um, Judge Eads mentioned a, a little bit about Wise Hive and that web portal for this, um, this grant to, to go through, and they have been instrumental in making this happen. And um, when all of this started, when we went uh, to working from home back in March, our Coaster of Terrible Foundation board uh, got together virtually and decided to donate $200,000 to uh, the COVID relief fund. Um, and I am actually going to share. Uh oh, we lost you. You I, just, yeah. I muted myself. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share with you right now a web page um, that you can go to on our website for the CoServe relief from fund from our CoServe Tribal Foundation Board of Directors. Um, we thought that was important to put it out there to help our, our members and our customers in this time. Yeah, and that website, as well as the county website, the county phone number, they're all in the chat room there. But Tracy, I want to thank you. Not only are you guys helping Denton County, but as I mentioned to you earlier, I got a call or a text from one of my counterparts in a whole other part of the country asking me, do I know anybody who can help with grant application software? And you were able to get me their contact. So thank you for helping out above and beyond Denton County. Uh, Michael, the judge covered a lot from a big picture perspective of what's being gone, uh, what the grant is all about. All of the details are out there on the website. You guys have done a great FAQ. We're coming up now in almost 24 hours that the process has been opened. What are you seeing to being one of the biggest problems, stumbling blocks, or the most frequently asked question out there? Do you have any feel for that at this point in time? Well, we've gotten some good feedback. Of course, uh, the call center, like the judge mentioned, they keep track of all the questions. And then if we have uh, clarification questions on on the essential, non-essential, I know the judge and I just got off uh, another call of explaining more of the program. And uh, the question was, how, how do we how do we figure that out, essential, non-essential? And we go through the Texas Division of uh, Emergency Management and what they did when the governor did his declaration, they started doing all the all the essential, non-essential through them. You know, the judge mentioned earlier <clears throat> that you could actually appeal that as well. So we do ask for everyone to apply. Uh, the goal with this with this first phase is to really help the businesses that were shut down, and some of those are still shut down. I know we like to give the example of gyms. I mean, the gyms are still they're still shut down. So uh, that's the first uh, really priority, and then move on to the next that if you were 
partially closed. So restaurants would be eligible, you know, because a lot of them uh, obviously had their dining room shut down. They were able to do to go orders, but uh, sometimes uh, that was just getting them, you know, from paycheck to paycheck and, and bill to bill. So uh, right now uh, that's a, there's a few different ways you can, uh, you can get a grant, but if you're completely closed, you can get 100% of, of their eligible grant up to $10,000, obviously. And then if you are partially closed, you can get up to 75%. And then there's two different calculations I want to touch on real quick is the higher of two different things, which is 175X the average payroll. And that's your payroll report that you would turn in the first quarter or 2X of your fixed costs. So um, like the judge mentioned, I think we had close to uh, 500 active applications in the first hour yesterday. I think our last update was at 9 p.m. and we had, I think, just around 300 submitted and then around 500 still active. So I, I haven't received a, a number of updates this morning, but um, we didn't want to make it an issue where it was first come, first serve. You know, if somebody had an emergency and I know a lot of these programs have only been open for 24 to 48 hours on some of them, they've been a little overwhelmed. But the commissioner's court made it a point that they wanted everyone to have an opportunity at this. We wanted to be able to get the word out to every corner of the county. Um, so everyone had uh, really a chance to apply. Right. And that's where you're working. As the judge mentioned, we've got 19 chambers and business associations. Economic development corporations are helping out. They've got it. Frisco EDC has it on their website. The city has it already posted. Uh, I don't know if Karen's going to be able to pull it up. We actually have a billboard up on 380 in Denton County, and we've got it shared up on that that's rotating around. So there you go on the screen. You can see oh, it. Oh, wow. And awesome. And so we're trying to let all of Denton County know about that. As you guys pointed out, you want every single business to be aware of this grant, um, to know about it, apply for it, regardless of what they've received, essential or not. Um, and just to know that Denton County is working, the judge mentioned, and I want to get back to you, Judge, you're hoping this is the first of many type grant programs that are out there. This is not tax money, will not affect the tax rate. And I know it's ironic, and I want to stress it's the first of many because different counties are trying to help in different ways. This is one that's working toward Denton County businesses. Collin County just came across, and we straddle both Denton County and Collin County. Collin County just came out with a program that's really going to help cities and residents. And I've actually been in touch with one uh, business owner right now that lives in Denton County. So the current open grants doesn't apply to them. The business is in Collin County, so they're not getting assistance there. And I'm saying, hold tight. Both counties, I'm sure, are going to have many other programs and working <laughs> forward. So, Judge, do you want to address a little bit of that point and how you're hoping to help as many people as possible over time? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, the first of all, the nonprofits are not eligible for this type of for this business grant program for the so the 501 C threes, the 501 C sixes like the chamber are not are not eligible. We are we're handling them in a different way. We've already awarded $735,000 to our Denton County nonprofits. I anticipate us next week probably doing another 600,000 and that goes towards rental assistance, uh, food, uh, other housing programs uh, across the county. And so that, that, those are early dollars. I anticipate that being much larger as well. So we're, we're helping our nonprofits, which is obviously helping our individuals. Um, and we're helping to prop up those, those nonprofits. The sad thing is while they need it the most, the nonprofits need their fundraisers and they need their, their different uh, activities. Uh, they, they've been prohibited from ha having group meetings and, and uh, banquets and golf tournaments and all that. So uh, when they actually need the money the, the most, they, they've actually been prohibited in many, many regards. So we are helping the, we are helping the nonprofits. We will continue to do so in a big way. And then the other thing is that um, we are, the commissioner's court is going to, um, the commissioner's court is going to uh, be considering next Tuesday what our allocation is to the cities so we can help them with their PPP and other, I mean, PPE, not PPP, the PPE, personal protective equipment, and other necessities that the cities may have. And so uh, Collin County did that on, I guess, Monday of this week. They gave their, they gave uh, broad grants, I think it's $55 a person to to their cities, um, we're going to be 
looking at a similar model as that in addition to the county doing countywide business grants programs. So uh, we're, we were not looking to have every city necessarily do a business grant program and cranking this out. It's a lot of efforts, a lot of time uh, to set one of these up. I can tell you that as and Michael. Uh, so we were, we, the county's looking broadly countywide to help our businesses and the nonprofits. And then we'll be coming back in and also helping the cities on an individual basis. And I'll probably be able to wrap it up. Yeah, so the main points, and like I said, we've got the link up on the chat room. The main points, Michael, going back to you, 50 employees or less, $7 million of annual revenue or less, uh, for-profit businesses, everybody can apply, but priority, higher ranking will be given to those who have been hurt the most. Um, all of that is done. You've done a great job in terms of identi identifying what line on the tax returns documentation that's needed that's all put out there. I know we've gotten some questions and on our team, Jen Van Dam is our contact. As people have questions, they're coming in and talking to her. Already one of the bigger questions that she's facing, Michael, is when the business must have been in operation and still being in operation in Denton County. Can you talk a little bit about why it has to go back to March of 2019? Yeah, so uh, some clarification on that. We've gotten this question probably in almost every uh, chamber presentation we've done. Is that you know if it was if it was started in a different state and then um, so it's been around 10 years, but then moved to Denton County in June of 19. Uh, it's not eligible, so we do require that it started before March 1st of 19. One of the biggest reasons that's um, that's important, and Judge touched on it earlier, is that the auditors want to see the March and April income statements from 19 and compare those to 20. So they really want to be able to see what your losses are, and that comes in with the scoring. So if you do have a larger financial loss, that will actually uh, move you a little bit further up to the top. So they do need to look at those four months specifically to compare. Very good. And Chris, I know I don't know if you've got those poll results. It was interesting what came up. If you want to talk a little bit about the results of the poll, and I believe we might have a question that may or may not have been answered that we can get out there. And Tony, let me add. Let me add yes, one thing to that. Let me add one thing to it. Michael gave a great answer, but let me add something. We, I anticipate, we get the green light uh, from our attorneys that we just hired about allowed uses for the for the. Uh, CARES Act, uh, I, and then we get to have more money rolled into the program, I would anticipate us coming back in and doing a special new business program uh, so that we could address that because that's a, that is a leave out on this because we, we this program is based on financial need and that you could have that demonstrated. But I would anticipate us coming back and doing a subsequent program just for the new businesses for the last year. So y'all stay tuned on that. Very good, Chris. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Judge. On that, that that was actually the exact question I had: is if we have a business that has that predicament, we've got such a fast-growing area here, new businesses have popped up so quickly in the last year or so. I'm glad to hear that that will potentially be coming in in the second phase or subsequent phases of this program. So that's good to hear. Uh, that the, I believe the question was answered in our Q and A, so I'll go ahead and leave it at that. Um, if if anybody else has any other questions, please feel free to use our Q&A function so that I can um, ask our panelists here. Just to briefly touch on our poll, I did share those at the beginning. Uh, it was just who on our call is coming from Denton County versus Collin County or Dallas County. And the majority are coming from Denton County. We've got 13 people answered our poll. About eight of them are coming from Denton County and five of them are coming from Collin County. So that is showing that we, we've got a, a pretty good diverse audience just on this call here, but also across our chamber. Um, about Tony, I believe is 45% of our chamber, maybe a little bit less than that, is on the Denton County side. So we, of the 1,200 to 1,300 members we have here at the chamber, we do have quite a good portion of them in the Denton County side. So we we do appreciate everything y'all are doing on in Denton County. Judge Eads, Michael, Tracy, everybody, you're doing a great job, and we we appreciate working with you on all of that. Very good, and yes, and we are obviously working to push it out to members, non-members, all of Frisco. So if you're in Collin County, but you know somebody who's got a business in Denton County, I want you to talk about it and mention that. Um, Michael, there's one question I had that I don't think has been addressed, or maybe maybe it has. Um, when do the funds need to be used by? Is there a deadline that if they receive funds, it needs to be used by a certain time, or is that not really too much of a concern because there's a lot of needs out there? 
Sure. We, we do not have a deadline on when the funds can be used. We do ask for documentation on where those funds are used. Main reason behind that is because if we, when we do add CARES Act money, we will be audited uh, by the Treasury. And so we're going to have to have documentation of that. So we're going to pass that on to the businesses. Um, so they will have to keep documentation and turn in a form in February of 20, uh, 2021. So uh, they will have to keep track of the, those receipts and invoices, but we don't have an actual uh, deadline in our structure uh, on that. So, uh, um, you know, we, we just ask for good documentation and um, accuracy on, on all the documents that are turned in. And it's okay to say owner's draw. You know, you don't, I mean, if, you, if, it's, a, if it's an owner's draw for $10,000, it's an owner's draw for 10000 So it doesn't have to be like what you spend it on as an owner's draw. It could just be an owner's draw, payroll, 10000 So it could be simple. Very good. Correct. So, we're, yeah, we're not trying to make it too complicated. We think we're pretty straightforward. One thing we've all done as a team is talk to the governmental entities that have put programs in place, the administrators. We've even talked to CPAs and gotten their, um, you know, had them play devil's advocate on going through this process and structure. Very good. And I was going to mention a question, and then I think we just got a Q&A in that's very similar. I was talking to one person who actually was operating in Denton County back last year, but now they're over in Collin County in the middle of all that, still serving clients in Denton County, but it is based upon where the business is physically located in March of 19, as well as currently, correct? That's correct. So they will have to be in Denton County. If they started in Denton County before March 1st and moved to another county, they would not be eligible. So they, they do have to be presently in Denton County and then had to have started before March 1st of 19. Right. And as we mentioned earlier, that doesn't mean that they're not going to get further assistance from Denton County and or Collin County. There are many rounds coming through and going from there. Tracy, I want to throw it back up to you a little bit. Um, obviously, you've been great. And I, I admire the way Denton County and CoServe is working to make it objective, make certain they're not involved in the selection process and all of that. But talk, is there, what are your feelings about that in terms of you guys being involved in Denton County to such a large degree? I mean, it feels like it's part of your mission and things along those lines. Just talk a little bit about that. And I'll, it would be remiss of me not to mention the Rounding Up program that you could go ahead and tell as well. Yes, of course. Well, again, like I said earlier, uh, CoServe, uh, which started over 80 years ago, has always been involved in all the communities that we serve. We're actually housed in Corinth, uh, which is in Denton County. And um, we, we thought it was so important to build a team, which is the team I'm a part of, to be able to disperse throughout all of our territories to become highly involved um, from the county commissioner level and on down. Um, we do a oper uh, what we call Operation Roundup. Um, I kind of want to touch a little bit about what capital credits are in case there's a few of our viewers here today who do not know what capital credits are. If you're a member of CoServe, um, you will see either a bill credit or a check in the mail once a year that our board of directors votes on each year to retire back to our membership. And that goes across the full board. That goes from residences, that goes to commercial industrial accounts, that goes to ISDs. And again, like you have seen today, it goes to our counties as well. And so what we do with our bills that Tony was speaking of, of the Operation Roundup, is we round your bill up to the next dollar level. And that goes into our CoServe Charitable Foundation Fund. And that is a huge amount of dollars that goes back into our local nonprofits, sure. into our um into our businesses that are, are, are serving our members and our um, residences of these communities. And so uh, that is a huge driver for our Coast of Turtle Foundation. So we Great. thank you for that and thank you for being a member. <laughs> thank you, <Coast laughs> uh, Judge and Michael, uh, can you touch a little bit? I think you've already stated it, but I just wanted to reaffirm an essential business, if they have been open, they are they eligible to apply but likely not to receive or are they ineligible no El they're eligible to apply but they they would they, i mean there's a scoring mechanism here so we want to get as many people in the door as possible and we'll evaluate it from there right so i mean and we figure with the demand that's already been exhibited and for this round the amount of money that's out there more than likely they're not going to be up there uh, in that area because as you said you're trying to take care of those that have not that have been hurt the most, likely have been closed, likely have not received any other assistance and going from there.
Right, but uh, we would like to have them in the spreadsheet so in case we go to 20 million, I mean, we could go deeper down the list. So that'd be great. Right. Um, and Chris, do we have another question out there by chance? We do, and this one is a little bit of an offshoot. It's not specifically talking about the open grant program. This is for Judge Eads. We had a question about how the county budget is being impacted by this. How will this impact capital improvement projects, bond elections, and um, so forth moving forward? Is, do you have any uh, words on that? Okay. We don't have a bond election on the, on the drawing board right now. Um, I, I, I'll tell you that. Although the markets are super low as far as um, interest rates, the money is almost free. And so it's a, it is a good time to go ahead and start some projects. <clears throat> um, we, we are not sales tax dependent like the cities are. So when you, when you see cities making drastic cuts and cities have a lot of, <clears throat> cities have a lot of, uh, what I would call non-essential functions as far as libraries and special event planning and firework shows and which they get that funded through their hotel motel occupancy tax. But library, so that's for tourism, historic preservation, et cetera, special events, that's a hotel motel tax. So if you are a city and receive that and your hotel occupancy is down, you're gonna to have to make budgetary cuts of that. Cities also get a lot of their revenue, uh, depends on the jurisdiction, you know, 40% or more, depends, just depends on where you're at, um, on, <clears throat> on sales tax. And so that helps provide your essential services plus some other niceties as you would may call them as, as and so running swimming pools and parks and recs departments and so forth that, that you, you can afford that in good times the county is a very different structure than municipal governments although we're, we are local governments we're very different uh, so much of our services are mandated by the state of texas we actually act as an arm of the state government we're created by the state government uh, cities can incorporate on their own and like their own charter so we we um, are property tax dependent and so the property taxes have been stable through here now the, you got a property tax bill from the Denton Central Appraisal District. That's not the county appraisal district. That's the Central Appraisal District that does property valuations for all the cities and the schools and the special districts across the county and the and for the county. So um, those those rates were those values were set as a property set by the on January one before the COVID virus hit, and so those those values were already preset uh, as January 1, and then people can appeal those values in here now, and, and I think the first week or so in June, I don't have the calendar in front of me, but <clears throat> people can appeal those values. So we will be negatively impacted because of fines and fees, because our court system was slowed down. Fines and fees will, will negatively impact the, the county uh, revenue. And so, uh, and in evaluations of property, as people appeal those now, they, we had, a, I think, a record number of appeals last year. We may have that again this year. Uh, so, so that will be impacting us. We're not, we're more financially stable, generally speaking, than the cities who are sales tax dependent. Very good. And Chris, speaking of taxes, that's always such a fun topic. Do we have one more question regarding that topic in a way? Anyway, yes, the question that we have talks about a business that pays county taxes to both Denton and Collin counties. I believe if I understand this question correctly, they might straddle the county line or have locations in both counties. So their question specifically is if they receive grant funding from Denton County, will that preclude their business from also receiving grant funding from Collin County? I don't know if we have a, a, an exact answer to that just yet. Um, just because Collin County doesn't have their program, grant programs for businesses together. So I'm going to toss that over to you, Michael. It looks like you might have an answer. Yeah, the county, if they had location is in Denton County, that location would be eligible. I, I don't think that would preclude them or exclude them from, um, from receiving anything from Collin County at, on that location if Collin County puts something in place. We don't usually, um, you know, in our system, we do say we want to help the companies or the businesses that have received uh, nothing um, first. They kind of we bump them up on the scoring sheet a little bit. Um, so we do ask for if you've received federal or state funding. Uh, so that does come into play for us. But if you're if you have a location in another county, that's not going to keep you from from getting something from that county unless they put that in their structure. Very good. 
And we've got about three, four minutes here before we wrap up. I want to give each of you an opportunity to have some closing comments, but just really want to thank you guys for being proactive, getting out in front, doing what you can, knowing that there are other opportunities going forward. As I mentioned, everything is out there at DentonCounty.gov slash open. That link is on our website, the, ch the city website, the EDC's website. We've got staff that are dedicated to just answering questions as well as the call center that's open there at Denton County. So, Judge, as you have noted, you want everybody to be aware of this, and you have challenged all of us working with you. The yeah. last thing that you want is come next Wednesday afternoon when the submissions have closed down, you don't want a single Denton County business saying, I didn't know about that. So we're going right. to everybody out there, challenge everybody to spread the word as much as possible. Judge, would you like to give us some comments? <laughs> comments? Thank you. That's a perfect segue. And, and, and thank you for the Frisco Chamber and uh, each of those efforts to help promote it. Uh, Tony, send us that picture. I love that picture on 380. Send that, send that to us. And I'm going to put it on Facebook today and give a shout out to y'all. Um, I appreciate that. The, um, I would just like to say, although it's quasi competitive as, as far as there is going to be a ranking system, I would just ask everybody to have a generosity of spirit to promote this to other people, promote this to your, there's, I think there's going to be a lot of funding here available. Okay. And so I would just ask that everybody share this as much as they can with their friends and neighbors. Think about, think through your phone. I think if y'all would just spend about five minutes and do this today and go, who do I know? Who is my, who's in my sphere of influence that, that may qualify for this grant? You know, who's a, who's a small business that I deal with and send them that information to say, Hey, I was thinking about you. I, wh I, you know, why don't you put this on your radar and, and look into this? What a blessing to be to somebody. You know, that might just totally make it or break it for them. You know, they could get five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars. Um, that might just really, um, really keep them in business or help them to restart. We know that there's upfront costs and, re and restarting costs of starting a business. And so if you can, if you can help pass that word on, you know, and the chambers are doing a great job of getting that word out. Don't assume anything. Don't assume other people saw it. And so if you just go through your sphere of influence, get that link sit there and message that out and text that to some of your friends and neighbors and just people you, you do business with your hairstylist, your, you know, just different folks that, you know, send that out to them and uh, that you think have 50 business, 50 employees or less. What a great, what a great opportunity to help other people. That's great. Thank We're all in this together. And if we take care of everybody else, we'll be taken care of in the long run. And this is being recorded and we'll have it out there so people can share the link. They can share this webinar and go from there. So thank you, Judge. Michael, some closing thoughts on your part, final advice for people submitting applications, et cetera. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to thank the chambers. I want to thank the EDCs and the communities for getting the word out. I actually even spoke with someone at UNT Entrepreneur Center yesterday that they were sharing the the information. So I think the partnership um, with everyone. I also want to thank Tracy and CoSer for what they're doing. Appreciate their partnership with everything. They've always been a great partner. And then really just, uh, you know, get your application in, uh, get the word out to every corner of the county. If you do have a question, please call us at the call center. Uh, like Tony said, the number is there in the chat. Also, we have the email. Um, please, if you have any questions before you hit submit, make sure your documentation is correct and go ahead and call in and uh, get that uh, get that question clarified, get that answer clarified. That's a great point because if they make a mistake, it's not like somebody's gonna be reaching out to them and saying, hey, you didn't do this right, resubmit it. If you submit it incorrectly or without all the proper documentation, you're basically out, correct? That's correct, that's correct. So if you do have, if you have one question or you, or you wanna make sure that you've got the right documentation going in, Instead of the, you know, if you accidentally put 2015 bank statements instead of 2018 or 19, make sure you've got the correct ones. Go ahead and call in and get that question answered before you hit the submit button. Right. And that's where the call center is there, or they can call any of the chambers that are in Denton County. We're all out there to help explain that and work them through. Tracy, as mentioned, CodeServe has been an incredible partner for many, many years. It's not a surprise that you guys are stepping up through this. So would you like to close us out on a big picture there? 
Sure, you're kind to say that. Thank you so much. Uh, again, we were honored to be a part of this panel today. Um, I want to thank uh, the Chamber, Tony, you and your team. Um, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Karen, for putting this together. Um, this is instrumental to our, our counties and our businesses. So we thank you, Denton County, uh, Judge Eads, Michael, Tally, and Shannon Josky. Thank y'all. Y'all have been wonderful and a joy to work with. And um, I also just want to thank CoServe. CoServe is uh, an amazing company. I've been there 12 years. Um, just to kind of go back to the Operation Roundup of the um, CoServe Charitable Foundation <laughs> funds, um, we're generating 1.2 million this year. So your little sense um, that you round up each month is generating 1.2 million that is allowing things like this to happen. Uh, again, I put out there the link to our CoServe COVID relief fund. Uh, that's on our website. I can share that again so it's um, closer down on your feed. Um, but if you need anything, we are, we are here, CoServe is here for our community, for our chambers of commerce and for our counties. Thank you so much, Tracy. And Chris, rounding out the chamber team and speaking on behalf of all the rest of the team, what do you have to say? Again, I want to echo everybody. Thank you, Judge Eads, Michael, Tracy, for being here. It's really great to hear from y'all with this program. We're really excited to be a part of getting this word out there about this program. We're doing everything we can, brainstorming different ideas to, to as, a, as in the billboard, to get the word out there. So we, we are happy that we're working with you, and we're excited that you joined us. Looking forward to working with you down the road. So as phase two opens up, we'll hopefully we'll be able to join all again and talk a little bit more about the, the differences in phase one versus phase two and go from there. Very good. So thank you, everybody. We want to thank all of you. It's great to be working together. It sounds cliche, but we're all in this together. We're working together um, and stress that there's a lot that Denton County will be doing, not just with this 2.2, but many other opportunities down the road. And uh, just glad to be working with each and every one of you. So thanks again for your time. We are going to be ending the webinar right now. Just as a reminder, everybody, if you guys want to hang out and chat with those who are on the webinar right now, you're free to do so. But just remember, if you stay online, you are going to be live with everybody out there. So be careful what you do and what you say. By now, we should have webinar etiquette down. But it's always good to remind everybody. So thank you, guys. It's good to smile and laugh during all of this. We are on the way to recovery. Thank you all very much. And we'll be back with you soon.